I've been playing Reverie Knight's Tactics because you have no time to game. <laughs> Welcome to the next When the Credits Roll review, a series in which I only review a game once the credits have rolled. So you can have some faith that I might know a little bit of what I'm talking about. Maybe. Possibly. Now, for the basics, Reverie Knight's Tactics was released on Jan 25th, 2022, on most modern consoles and PC, and was developed by Forty Giants Entertainment and published by Fulcrum Publishing. It took me about roughly 10 hours to see the credits roll. We take on the role of Aurora, a member of the Kingdom, and a worshipper of Tana Toe, a god of wisdom and knowledge. She's tasked with going to find an expedition that had previously been sent to the Elven Kingdom. This expedition was led by her father, and has since gone missing. But see, the purpose of the expedition was to discover what had happened between the Elven Kingdom and the Goblinoid race, because it appears the Goblinoid race may have conquered the Elven Kingdom. And, you know, it's not unexpected since the elves previously ousted the goblinoid race. So, tit for tat. So it's kind of a bit of an interesting background there. But in this backdrop of a missing father, a conquered kingdom, Aurora must seek the truth and hopefully grow herself into the person she is meant to be. Now, onto the gameplay. As usual, let's quickly cover the outer battle mechanics. In Reverie Tactics, we have a classic node-based map. What this means is instead of having a map you run around, you select a specific spot on the map and enter them. And then in those areas, you tend to have selectable items to interact with. These items might be shops, people, whatever. In Reverie's case, these nodes are divided into the base camps and battle nodes, and it's set over three separate maps. The initial base camp is the most important as it has all the shops, which are kind of unique in this game. Firstly, you have a chef that takes items you find in battle and makes various healing items. Then you have the captain that uses some of those similar items and other items to make bombs. So yes, there's a bomb shop. And then finally, you have your very own goblin that produces accessories using Cogni, a currency that you get from battle and completing side objectives. All of these shops will receive an upgrade at some point in their item selection as the game progresses. At the end of each area, you kind of get sent into a dungeon. So the last node, instead of being a battle, takes you into a dungeon. Uh, and this is, again, just a series of nodes that every time you go to one, it un unlocks multiple routes that you can take to the next ones. Uh, in the case of the dungeon as well, most of the nodes are battle nodes, an entrance to the dungeon, an exit spot when you get to the end of it. And the other ones are treasure chests which give you a lock-picking mechanic, like mini-game type thing, just to get a cheeky item. Um, along with this lock-picking mechanic, there are a couple of other puzzles that you'll need to solve to progress. Uh, personally, I find these more annoying than anything else because I'm just not a big fan of puzzle games. The other base camps don't have anything particularly special about them. They're just there for story tidbits. You, characters you find will use that base mechanic as... Like, that base location is a place where you can talk to them outside of like the story interactions between going to the different nodes. And that's pretty much it for outside of the battle, so onto the meat and bones of the game. This is a classic example of a tactics RPG. It's a grid based system which utilises the good old I go, you go system. Basically, I move all my little dudes and then the enemy moves all their little dudes. On your turn, you get up to four characters, so it's not the biggest roster of characters and you only ever have four in battle, and you only ever have four for your entire party. So they're not interchangeable at all. There's not like any fifth or sixth characters that you can swap out or anything. You just have four, up until the point you get four. Each character has two action points, because this uses an action point system. And these can be used to use various skills, move, defend, item, etc. Each skill, along the bottom shows how much AP is needed to use it. So sometimes some things require using both points. You don't actually get a choice in this matter. If it says two, and it can also be used with one if you've already done an action, you don't get to say, oh, I only want to use one. It just does both. So make sure you're paying attention when you select something. A neat little feature is that you don't actually have to use all the AP in one character in one go. 
meaning that you can say move one character using one of their AP points, switch to another character, use one of their move points. So it, by doing this, you kind of have a lot of tactical flexibility in that you can move all your characters around, organize combo attacks, move people into range of healing, etc. Before we discuss attacking, let's have a look at the characters themselves to understand what's going on a little bit more. The characters only have three stats, like three main stats. There are others, like additions to that, um, outside of the usual HPMP. That's Defense, Might and Finesse. Defense reduces the damage you receive. Might and Finesse relate to the skills that you use and are color-coded. So Finesse affects blue, Might affects red. Then as your character levels up, XP... So then as your character levels up, XP in this game is given on completion of a map and not individually like you get in a lot of games. You unlock more skills and you'll be given a choice between two each time you unlock a skill. Two will pop up on the screen, you select which one you want. Um, you can only take three of these skills into battle. So it's that's kind of defined your character build. Are they going to be focused around long distance attacks, healing, whatever. And you can also equip three accessories on a character which will buff their finesse or might or whatever. The usual stuff. Now, as I said, there are kind of some other stats outside those three main ones, but these are more percentages. So you percentages to hit, glance, resist, status effects. Um, so it's kind of, they're not major stats, they're just like a percentage chance of something to happen. But all this leads us to using the skills. Like I said, you take three and you also have a basic attack skill. None of the basic attacks use MP, so you always get to use them. All the other skills use some of your MP. And these can be heals, buffs, debuffs, attacks, etc. So when attacking, when attacking the enemy, facing matters, with the side and back attacks being better, and if you can surround the enemy, you can also get to use team attacks. This will use all the AP of the character attacking, and one AP of all the other characters involved. And more than one mate can be involved, so yes, you can have all four characters surrounding an enemy dude, and they all get involved in the attack. And that team attack um, on the screen replaces your normal attack. So it doesn't use uh, MP, it just uses AP. But if you don't want a team attack, you can flick out, out from using it. Uh, along with your three skills, you have a focus attack. Focus is a bar that fills up from being attacked or doing attacks and stuff like that. It's just like your, your traditional like Final Fantasy style limit break system. It builds as things happen. Um, it has two levels. Once you hit 50 focus points or 100 focus points, um, 50 being your, like your basic version of the special attack, 100 being the bigger version, so it might have a wider range, etc. Uh, these are quite powerful skills and tend to come with status effects as well. So they are very useful and can change the flow of a battle on using them. As well as you and the enemy, there are a lot of various bits around the map, such as breakable objects that contain loot, chests that have treasure, um, but beware, the enemies will break these objects and steal the treasure. And you don't get it back even if you kill them. But alongside these nice items, there's also hazards such as pits, burning floors, spike walls. And they can all be used to damage you or the enemy. So going back to the skills, we a lot of them have push or pull effects. This is important because you won't be able to knock your enemies around the map into these hazards. Or away from hazards. Um, some extra notes about battle as well is that as well as whatever the map objective is which is usually to kill the enemies um, you also have side objectives that on completing give you extra XP and Cogni remember Cogni being what you use in the one shop to buy extra, extra accessories and these can be as simple like collect treasure or more complicated like knocking enemies into a specific trap on the map giving a lot of extra complexity to the battle. Speaking of complexity, um, the game has multiple difficulty levels. I played on normal, which I found out was a later edition, and the main feature of normal mode is your character's heal after every battle. 
I thought this was just normal. I didn't realise it until later on that it was a, an additional thing that they'd added after. It turns out this wasn't the case when the first dropped. As your damage carried on into each battle in the original versions of the difficulty, uh, what are now the higher difficulties. So this made healing items and healing skills very important. And they're also quite rare. So the game has a lot of negative reviews from when it first came out because of these difficulties and the way it was designed. Because you could literally soft lock yourself where your characters are just too battered to actually progress any further. Because there's no like old maps you can go to to beat on small enemies to give yourself a chance to heal and such. Or grind items or levels or anything like that. There's, there's none of that. So if you were too battered and you were low on MP and had no healing items left, you couldn't heal and you basically couldn't progress in the game. So it's something to be aware of, especially if you're going into the higher difficulties. But being higher difficulties now, you're kind of expecting it to be difficult. So what's actually good? So I enjoyed the flexibility of the battle system. And the actual difficulty, even on normal mode, means you have to think more tactically than some of its contemporaries. Especially considering there's no grinding. You can never really out-level the enemies. So in that sense, it is quite. A, it can be considered more tactical affair than some other others in the tactic genre the story as well felt pretty fun uh, it had some solid character interactions and i actually felt like some of the characters were friends so what is bad now i know this is personal but i struggled a bit with the art style but things like that are very personal so you may well love it only having four characters as well felt a bit of a letdown as the battle system has a ton of potential so having a larger roster with more variety would just be more fun. As well as the enemy variety is a little bit lacking. So before taking in my final thoughts, what did the critics think? So I played on the PC version, so I always try and look at the same one. Um, and on Metacritic, it took a bit of a battering, only scoring a 63 with a single user review, a single user review which is enough to give the score. But the user review gave it a 2. And on Steam it has mixed. I feel this is all based on the initial release version. It seems that it's, since then it's been quite largely overhauled. Now this could bring conversation around review scores, initial release dates, etc. But as a, but as of 2023, I believe it deserves a slightly higher current score in its current state than maybe what it deserved when it first came out. So yeah, overall, I think it's one of those games with a lot of potential. A solid foundation for a possible series has been laid. as a decent-ish story with some fun characters. A surprisingly flexible and fun battle system. So my final rating is give it a go.